incredibly annoying to me that you guys just got your 501c3 and this is better than anything that I've ever done and this is super well organized and I feel like I'm already behind and how is that possible? Uh, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, you could do dossiers uh, for the CIA. <laughs> Can you tell my people have heard of the Birmingham Education Foundation? Okay, so that's huge. That's more than I usually get. Our mission, and we work exclusively with the Birmingham City Schools. Everyone heard of the Birmingham City Schools? Mm -hmm. 24,000 students, predominantly emanating from low-income backgrounds, predominantly identifying as people of color, the vast majority African American, and all of them have the most potential. And my job every day is to increase the number of students who are, who are graduating or on the path to graduate college, career, life ready in the Birmingham City Schools. It's a pretty good job. The way we do that, the way we feel like we do that, is we build a diverse network of people and organizations all over this city who are going to work in their individual and especially collective capacities to expand opportunities for our students. That plays out in a lot of different ways, and I've noticed in the bios there are folks here who work at Wells Fargo, folks who work at UAB, folks who work at Birmingham Southern, folks who work at, Stan work at Stan Stanford. All I can say is thank you. You guys are consistently and continually expanding opportunities for our students, and we appreciate it. So the way that plays out is kind of three ways. The first is that direct programming that we want run. Second is our specific network building, and third is as a strategic partner to the Birmingham City Schools. Because there's a lot we can do immediately for students. And we've gone from over well, the last three years serving about 1,000 students per year to 6,000 students per year in our direct program. But in the long run, we've got to make sure that system's better. Right now, the system's not very good. And that's a long-term play, and we do a lot of different things to try and make that system as good as a home. Because right now, the system's sinking all boats. We need it to lift all boats. And I want to make sure you're hearing what I'm saying. Our, I'm not saying that our students can't do it. Students have limitless potential. I'm not saying our teachers are bad. Our teachers, for the most part, are doing incredible work with limited resources. And I'm not saying our families don't care. The vast majority of the students that we work with have someone, usually more than one person at home, that loves them and cares about them and wants to do well. But government bureaucracies don't get better, they get worse. And this has been a big dysfunctional one for a long time, and it's gonna take us a long time to get it to where our students deserve. In the short run, we can do a lot of good stuff for our so direct programming, that's college, college access. So that's very similar to what you do. We start in ninth grade and we do four years. Everything from what the heck is college to every single one of our kids getting to do a tour of UAB. And then it just, the funnel's this big and then it narrows down over the course of four years for application help, FAFSA prep, helping our students identify the different colleges, really just digging in. And the thing we're piloting this year, which I'm really excited about, excited about for 60 freshmen, is called Student Directed Learning Plan. We will have an online module, and the question that we will ask our students is, what are you passionate about? And when we know what that answer is, then we leverage the network and go all in with that students through this online module to get them the resources and the plan they need for four years that will get them out the door. Because I come from complete privilege. Six foot tall, straight white male, high income background. So much privilege you can barely screw that up. And what that allows me to do is it gives me a big margin for error. Big margin for error. My students, this, the difference between me and my students in Birmingham City Schools, margin for error. Capability-wise, it's the same. But I can drift, they can't. We need a plan. I think every kid needs a plan. I think our kids really need a plan here. We think that 60, that interactive piece, which will allow us to do it, mentors to do it, teachers to you know, interact with it, family members to interact with it, we think that's the future. And we think we're going to pilot, we're going to run fast and break things this year with the 60 folks. And then we think that that's going to form a foundation for the planning that does all of our work for us. But we also know college isn't the only option for our students. My job isn't to tell a kid what to do. It's to tell them all the stuff that's out there. So we do, two, we do a six-year scope and sequence starting in seventh grade that's career access. Four years of what the heck's out there. Kids on earth know 10 jobs. They think a banker's a teller. They think a lawyer's what they see on TV. And they don't know all the stuff that is out there. So we take them to UAB Hospital. And we take them to Regents. And we take them to Wells Fargo. And we take them to all of the different places all over here. And they meet everybody. When they go to Alabama Power, they meet the folks that walk the line. And they meet Mark Crosswhite. And they meet everyone in between. And they find out what the job is and how you get there. And that's four years ago. Junior year is, is job shadowing. Let's go a little bit deeper. Now that you have some context, 
This last year we had five second semester paid internships at UAB Hospital, 120 hours during the day. The second semester seniors, unless they're doing AP, are not doing very much. So we want to get them out in the community and doing that learning. Uh, this year we'll do 35. We eventually want to get to every kid in the Birmingham City System, all 1,300 doing that. But you've got to start small, make it work, and keep growing. Uh, and UAB Hospital is the hardest to do it because you don't need a yellow fever shot to do a bunch of other internships. So if you can make it work there, you can make it work a lot of places. But that's not enough. So we have to do essential skill work. What we hear from all the employers and all the folks we work with all over the city and all over this country is our great college graduates walk into jobs and what are they doing? They're on their phone. Or they're not making eye contact. Their resume is a disaster. Their social media profile is an epic disaster. We are going to work with our students to do essential skill work. Seventh grade is entrepreneurship, so they're going to do Shark Tank. Eighth grade is networking. We used to do that in tenth grade, and the students said, you're having us meet people we don't know how to do it. Teach us in eighth grade, so we listen. Ninth grade is personal brand branding. Tenth grade is social entrepreneurship. Eleventh grade is interview skills, and twelfth grade is public speaking. If you heard WBHM this spring and this summer, you might have heard three student commentaries. Those are our kids. And the way it works is three to four in-school sessions. We do the curriculum logistics, we handle the inside the box, volunteers come in and present based on their experiences. That ends in a conference. That conference is staffed by the largest rotary and the largest colonists in the world. They are scored and they are judged and we evaluate that piece. Then we do a follow-up to do reflections and thinking notes. And then every one of our kids graduates with a portfolio. So they have a resume, they have a LinkedIn profile, they got a headshot, they've done public speaking, they've done group work, the whole thing. This year we're doing a pilot. K through six, social emotional learning. By next year, we'll have a K through 12 scope and sequence. Really excited about that. There's a great group called Venture for America that connects great young folks to startups all around. We're the first nonprofit to take advantage. I got a really smart 22 year, 22 year old UNC grad who's just going all in. Really excited about that. And that's good. That's our direct program. It's not enough. So what we do for our network building is we do 15 to 25 network nights during the year. They happen at schools. They happen in communities. We're structuring accountability. It's not my job to go in a community and do things too important. It's immoral and it doesn't work. Other than that, it's great. Uh, so we get a bunch of people together. We have 80 to 100 folks showing up. And it's everyone. It's students. It's families. It's educators. It's nonprofit leaders. It's everybody. And we get together and we feed them. And there's fellowship. Everyone says what's new and good in their life. Great way to start a meeting. And then we have two things. We call it business of the network. Anyone can raise their hand. I have a senior engineering project. I don't know where to start. I'm a ladies basketball player. You don't want to come to our games. Can someone help me? I'm a teacher. I'm trying to get kids to Costa Rica. I don't know how to fund the trip. I'm a nonprofit leader. I've got 200 summer uh, program slots to go. I have nowhere to go. I don't know how to get them, give them out to kids. And you vote with your feet. You have 20 minutes. They have conversations. We write, and people go and talk. Uh, last year, the senior engineering project person, he, he was sitting down with two teachers, two students, uh, two engineering professors from UAB and an engineer from Pacifica talking about a senior engineering project. We write down everything everybody says, then we put it on a board and we track it. Last year, the Alabama Symphony Orchestra played with the Carver Symphony. We had an adult literacy program going on for our Latino Hispanic families in total because of the Literacy Council. We're a connector. We just connected them together. Then we have Marketplace. Everyone gets 30 to 60 seconds. You all get 30 to 60 seconds. The woman who's got a third grade education and takes care of them. The block is 30 to 60 seconds. CEOs get 30 to 60 seconds. We have a forum. We will honk you off because we end at seven. <laughs> and everyone can say what they want, what they need, or what they have to offer. I'm a tutor, a math tutor. Does anyone need math tutoring? <laughs> Hands go up. We write names down. We connect them. And then we track it. Last year we had over 600 matches. Everything from kids getting jobs and internships to a girl got two new tires for her car. We've had kids' ACT scores go up. We've had all sorts of things. It is not my job to tell the community what to do. It's my job to listen and act, and act as a connector. But that's not enough. So what we do, in addition to that, are two major things. You're going to hear partner a lot. I don't do anything on my own. One is called student change makers. Two middle schools, two elementary schools, two high schools. And the students get together and they pick a topic. We just help them out. Last year, our high school students found out about redlining. They hosted a conference at their school all about redlining. They had UAB professors and bankers and everybody coming in, and they had a real discussion. Our elementary school kids at Tuggles said they had a lot of friends in the Salvation Army who didn't have anything really nice, so they made them pillow slips. Never would have thought of that. Never would have thought of that. And we're going to do network councils this year. Five groups of diverse people who are all in that will work with our schools to identify something that that school wants. Tuggles going to focus on elementary literacy. And 
they are going to go all in to get that goal. And that's not enough. So we work toward, with our system, we have the largest ACT prep program in the system right now. Two, year, two years ago, we started at Ramsey. Uh, we worked with college admissions made possible. Some of you may have heard of Martin Alls in the Homewood City School System, the guy's the same. He runs his nonprofit for free. We haven't paid a dime. And we ran, we ran at Ramsey, we've got an ACT prep program. Uh, last year, we had more benchmark scores at Ramsey than we did the last two years combined. That was after two years of ACT prep. We did it, expanded it to Carver last year, tripled the number of ACT benchmark scores. Now we're going to have it for every junior in the system. Really exciting stuff. Uh, but we also do pre-AP pilot. We have the fastest growing number of AP, qualifying AP scores in the country for the last five years running this A-plus education partnership. Homewood's benefit, and it's like a big double in the state. Rural schools, urban schools, all these schools are benefiting. High income, low income, doesn't matter. And the big holes we're in, where 80% of our AP tests, the tests are blocks. How fast would Homewood High School burn to the ground? <laughs> it's unacceptable. But it's because it's pre-AP. AP is the NFL, guys. If you have not done pre-AP, it's like taking a snap and you've never played college football. We're getting our teachers the training. We're in our second and third year to do that. We're really, really excited about that. Uh, and so those are just some of the things that we do. There's a lot of stuff we do in terms of connections that don't doesn't show up in the annual report because that's fundamentally what we're trying to do. We're trying to build this network, but I'm essentially at the intersection of the most generous community in the United States of America and our Birmingham City Schools where our kids have a lot of needs. A lot of these, but they don't often have that network that I have. And I put them together, and sometimes I gotta get real hands on. Sometimes I'm just a funder and a strategic partner, and sometimes I can just walk away because I know those folks have got it. And ultimately, right now, we've got to get to the Birmingham, what's great about Birmingham, so the last five to ten years, my wife and I joke, as soon as my son was born, my first son was three, everything in Birmingham started to get really cool. We've heard about these breweries. We hear rumors about them. <laughs> uh, like there's all this great stuff that's happening in this city, five to ten years. And the next five to ten years is are we creating an inclusive space for diverse talent? That's why we get our lunch eaten right now by New Orleans and Nashville and Atlanta and all those places. I think we're gonna get there because of places like this, Innovation Depot, because of UAB, because of all the stuff going on. But here's the scary thing. As Birmingham has expanded and grown in any number of ways, it's been completely Success for the Birmingham City Schools. We haven't moved an inch. You no, know, 20% of our kids can read. I'm pretty sure that'd be true if we didn't have school system. Say that again. 20% of our kids can read. I am pretty sure that would be true if we didn't have a school system. I think one out of five kids would figure that out. That's crazy. That's crazy. The single biggest piece of evidence that we haven't moved an inch in this city is the Birmingham City Schools. A completely segregated, low performing school system. And the vast majority of people that don't believe in our kids have one thing. That doesn't stop them from having loud opinions. But we, when we connect these folks together, people from all over this community, very generous, very good, they go to war for our kids. And when they go to war and we go all in, that's what we want. Not just morally. I mean, that's why I do. My heart breaks. It's not the community I want to live in, it's not where I want to raise Jack and Kate. But strategically, if we make sure that our kids have that kind of potential, graduate prepared every year. Guys, they've been in this community since God was a boy. They want to stay. They're going to stay. Let's get them plugged in. If, if I had to, if the opportunity to bring Hyundai here every year, we'd take them in a heartbeat. That's the same economic impact. Not just a graduation rate, I don't care. It means nothing. It means nothing to you. Everyone graduates. It's the easiest thing in the world, right? That's what I'm sorry about. <laughs> <laughs> but being prepared is different. And that's what you guys are about, and that's what we're about. I've been added three years, 600% growth in the number of students. We serve 300% growth in our staff and our budget. But we're not done yet. It's going to take a while, but I'm in. And this community is all in. You name a business, you name a leader, I force them to do something. And it hasn't been all that hard. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's exciting about connecting with this group. In the 10 minutes I've been here, not just the pack, but talking with these folks, talking with these folks and talking with, these, with what you have done here, must work together. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. This is really, really exciting stuff. When I was running Teach for America, people heard of Teach for America? So I ran Teach for America for four years here. And when I, we were in, we moved to home. So I applied to Birmingham jobs saying, guys, I live at home. Just so you know, 
And there will be plenty of people who fire arrows at me at that. So you need to understand that you're hiring me for this job. You have to know that we're staying here. And not because I don't like this system, but because uh, the only, I told my wife when we moved to this house, they're taking us out in a coffin or handcuffs. I'm never moving here. Uh, and the reason we chose Homewood was two things. Because it had the two things we want. And there are very few places in the state that offer it. Number one is academic. We see it as a feature, not a bug. Amen. That's what that, to me, all of us would say. Key, and that is the key. Homewood is the best school district in the state of Alabama because it values both of those things. And that is not just the present, that is the future. And if we, if Homewood doesn't get it right, and it is getting it right, but if it doesn't continue to get it right, we're done. We're lost. I mean, we are lost. And so that's why the work you do is so important uh, and why I'm so proud to be part of Homewood and why I am excited uh, to connect us together. And I'll be quiet in a second. I would be not, I would not be doing this if not for Boston College. Boston College changed my life. Okay, we moved here in 1993 from New Jersey. Saying you're my cousin, Betty came out. <laughs> you can imagine what we thought about this place. There's a word for us. It was called bait. That's what we thought. We had all these impressions of Alabama. Ironic, because we live in New Jersey, and everyone in Alabama had impressions of New Jersey. <laughs> but we didn't, I was in eighth grade, so you gotta give me, I didn't understand what I already meant. Um, but we moved here and changed our life a little bit. And I didn't live in Indian Springs, because when we moved to Greystone, there wasn't a Spain Park, it was Hoover, and didn't want to do the drive, so I ended up in Indian Springs, which was a really, really great school, and a great opportunity. And I had a lot of different college options, fewer than I wanted, uh, but I got a lot of great ones, and I'm lucky that I got to Boston College. And sometimes you just think something else is going on because you, you can't get this lucky when you're 18. That man changed my life. And let me tell you one Boston College has great academics. I don't need to tell you that. You can read the stats, you can see the people who graduate. But there are a lot of schools that also have great academics. And they're right there with Boston College. And they're often right there in Boston, the Harvards and the MITs and the Boston College, even Boston University, I guess. Uh, these are great schools, okay? And you're going to meet a lot of diverse, Great people. Thanks to fantasy sports, I've been managed to keep in touch with these folks for 50 or 20 years. Uh, these are great folks, but a lot of schools have that great, diverse folks. This is the difference in Boston College, in my opinion. During orientation, I went out and did service. They're not kidding around about it. Men and now women for others. And I'm not Catholic. And I didn't go there and feel excluded because I wasn't Catholic. But that spirit of men and women for others go out there and not just learn in a classroom in an antiseptic way. Go out there and apply it and do it with the community. Not to and for them, but with them. And because of that opportunity, because I was able to do service during spring break, do service during the year, but really think about my holistic education in terms of who I am going to be, that's how I got to teach for America, which is how I got to running Teach for America, which is how I got to do right now. And in between, I was an attorney. And I love being an attorney. And no attorney believes that when I tell them. But I really liked being an attorney. But even during that process, being an attorney, no matter what you do, if you go to Boston College, you've got the academic excellence. You've got the great network. But what you have is that spirit for others. And however you're applying that, in the community, out of the community, no matter what you're doing, if you are working and serving others, then you are going to do well in this life. And I will tell you, but for Boston College, I think I'd be OK. I'd be doing fine, but I wouldn't be doing this. And I, would, I don't think I'd be nearly as, as happy. Uh, and that's because of that. He took a little bit of a chance, and I think overall it's a net game uh, for them, but it was a huge, huge, huge game for me. So I'm excited to be here, excited to get to talk to you for a little bit. That's the main event. And so I am going to turn it over to either to Josephine now to talk to Howard, but otherwise I just can't wait to connect with you all. Congratulations, I just heard you to the 501c3 status. That is uh, pretty difficult to do nowadays. Uh, and I'm really excited to get to work with you uh, and, and support each other in any way possible. Thanks so much, guys.